Hi, this is me, Annabelle, the founding and managing partner of a law firm, Prefervi, on day three of the Cannes Film Festival. And I wanted to give you an update about uh, this trade show. So basically, uh, it's terrible. It's catastrophic in the sense that the organization is uh, like a Nazi organization, <laughs> in the sense that uh, you, you, uh, you have to uh, take a, a PCR COVID test every 48 hours, uh, which is going to be the results of which are going to be released eight hours after you've done the test. So what do you do for eight hours? I have no idea. So you, then you have to have an antigenic test in a pharmacy in uh, in Cannes. I mean, um, then when you try to go into the Palais de Festival, it takes 15 minutes because these crazy security guards are scanning you and scanning the content of your bags for as I said, 15 minutes. So it just isn't bearable if you are just like a, a, a person accredited for the uh, uh, film market. And when you get inside the Palais de Festival, there, there, are, there is no one. Like all the exhibitors didn't come this year, so it's empty. The whole place is empty. There are only the, uh, the booths for Uni France, which is like a French uh, uh, trade film organization. Uh, Cannes Docs, which is part of the Cannes uh, Film Market and Festival, and uh, and uh, and um, you know the producers' corner, etc. But so basically, the lowdown is that most of the like not most of the exhibitors, like 90% to 95% of the exhibitors did not come to the Cannes Film Festival this year. They either doing it online or just skipping it, and. Um, Oh yeah, another point as well, which is most disappointing, is that when you are accredited and you, as a, as a, 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 a you know, a, like a, a, a market participant who is on site in Cannes, uh, then you are provided with some credentials to go online because so most of the, uh, most of the, uh, of um, events uh, organized by the uh, film market are actually happening online. They're not physically happening. Uh, on uh, in Cannes, they're basically happening on Zoom. But the thing is that the credentials they gave you, they gave me on the first day, which was the six, um, were not working. So I couldn't go on the Zoom call because uh, on the Zoom call, which was about the Sheffield, uh, you know, festival, etc. Moreover, um, the director of the Cannesville festival took offense of the fact that I released the previous video about the dreadful uh, treatment um, that uh, was uh, made of me uh, when I actually asked some questions to these crazy people, uh, co music composers who have no idea what they're talking about on the uh, various uh, you know, music rights, uh, Joel Beckerman and the other guy, Alphonse Bakuda or whatever. And so um, Jérôme Payard took offense, sent me a, e a scaffing email saying, how dare you releasing such a video? And then when I came on the first day, so the first day of the festival, they said, no, no, you have to go to this booth over there, which is like for late arrivals. I said, what do you mean late arrivals? This is the first day of the festival. I'm not late at, a, at any rate, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, but you have to go to the late arrivals one. And so when I arrived, I said, yeah, okay, so you have to repay. I bought my accreditation for 438 euros and 28 pence back in June 2021, of course. And then they said, yeah, but there was, we actually recredited you because you were going to do this, uh, this thing, this, uh, this presentation on the 9th of, uh, of, of July. But now since it's not happening again, and since Jean Payard has decided to uh, uh, not give you a free accreditation because you dared to actually make a, a, a video about the treatment you received, um, you know, at the hands of the, of the film market people and the SSM people and this crazy music composers, uh, Joel Beckerman and uh, Alphonse Bakuda from EXA, uh, then you have to pay again the 438 uh, euros and 28 pence. So it was, a f I said, yeah, but I haven't, I still haven't received a refund of 438. Yeah, well, it happened on 1st of July, so it's imminent. Well, we are on the 6th of July and you still, I still haven't received it in my bank. And they were like, yeah, no, no, it's coming, it's coming. So anyway, I ended up pay, paying 850, I mean, you know, tw twice the, uh, uh, the, the, the payment for the accreditation in one uh, like uh, on, on the six well I still hadn't received the, uh, the refund uh, which allegedly had been done 
uh, on the first of Jan of, on the first of July, and so it took like bloody ages to get the accreditation. Then, as I said, there was this whole pilava because nobody knows what's happening. Nobody knows whether you need a PCR test or uh, just an antigenic test is fine. So you keep on asking questions. These people have not been briefed. All these stupid, I mean, what's this, you know, this management is just dreadful. Nobody could tell me whether I needed to have a PCR test or just an antigenic test to be able to get into the, the uh, Palais de Festival. Um, yeah, and so that they also have just one loo open for the whole Palais de Festival because they don't want to be bothered, you know, having to clean, deep clean uh, uh, loos uh, in different places. So you just have one on the, um, in the uh, uh, basement floor and that is it in a place which is like probably, you know, 60,000 square uh, feet or something. It's, it's just ridiculous. So um, all this happened and then I came to the conclusion around 12 p.m. French time on uh, I had arrived at around 10 okay so I had been there just like an hour and a half not even because then I had to go to the pharmacy to the chemist to get the uh, uh, to do to do the um, the uh, antigenic test and also I went to the to the tent to do the PCR test all these data by the way about the COVID results are being transferred to the French state in complete oblivion and breach of the uh, you know GDPR and the French Neil Laws, so all your data, your, all your data, your personal data is actually tr tr uh, transmitted to the French state, which is like a fucking, you know, uh, autocratic regime. I mean, we are no longer in a democracy in France. You have to bear this in mind. Um, and so, you know, all this conjunction of things, it doesn't even work when you try to uh, basically log yourself with your laptop um, to the um, to the platform to look at the to watch your content online from a uh, film market the you know police everywhere french police everywhere barriers everywhere so it's and fences everywhere so it's very difficult to actually move around i decided i would go back to the accreditation desk and ask for a refund and that's what i did so i'm not going to do any of the events <coughs> sorry this year of the um oh that's my uh, that's my train uh of the um uh, yeah, I'm not going to do any uh, of the events uh, this year of the um, Canfield Festival, but I'm going to the CNC, so this is the French uh, tra trade organization and the regulator. Excusez-moi, ça va à Cannes? Ça va à Cannes? Ça va à Cannes de ce côté, hein? Merci, madame. Um, yeah, so I'm, uh, I went to the CNC pavilion yesterday and listened to some um, interesting um, content about you know the um, censorship and how to get rid of censorship um, in the um, in the um, uh, film industry, which apparently is a big topic at the moment. Well, no wonder you know there's no democracy anymore in Europe. You know with, with this uh, uh, COVID crisis, the governments have totally taken over uh, citizens' lives and uh, movements and uh, freedom of movement and freedom of speech. It's just it's terrible and you can receive this when you get, get to the Cannes Festival. And one thing that really struck me in the afternoon when there was a presentation about the Cahiers du Cinéma, which is like urban, intellectual, boring <laughs> French newspaper about films. And when I say boring, it's just, just too in-depth, you know. I looked at one of the latest edition about the Cannes Film Festival. Ça va bien à Cannes, n'est-ce pas? Cannes. Cannes. Ça va dans cette direction, je ne sais pas si ça va dans la Cannes. Comment Ça va dans la direction de Cannes, mais je ne sais pas si c'est... Ah, ok, merci. Ah, ok, merci. Ouais, je vais quand même vérifier parce que c'est une bonne question. Ah. Yeah, so, um, basically... What a mess. <laughs> Not sure about the train. Um, so, basically, I was saying, it just is quite concerning uh, what's... Uh, you know what's happening um, oh, fuck. this is my train <sighs> yeah it, it is quite concerning what is happening because people are still not understanding that um, streaming is the way of the future okay so this old guy president of the Cahiers du Cinéma was like yeah but you shouldn't uh, uh, I don't understand why Jodie Foster said that during the first lockdown she was happy to spend time, you know, in her pyjamas with her wife in bed and just watching content on streaming sites. Well, 
what's wrong with that? Why, why, why could you not say that? This is the way of the future of watching content. And, you know, what's, what's wrong with that? I mean, going to theatres is going to be an absolute exception. Um, in case you really want to see a film which is like, uh, you know, for 3D, which needs to have some 3D or sound effects and stuff. But most of, uh, most of the other content you're just going to keep on watching online on streaming sites like we've done for all these, um, all these uh, um, uh, lockdowns and for the last uh, two years. So there are still all these little thoughts, you know, in the 60s, in the 70s. And I just like ugh, keep on going about how it was in the past and how the past was better before. Well, just fuck that, you know. Just get get these people away, these you know baby boomers, white guys. Just get them fucking away from this. Like these people need to retire. They need to not show their faces anymore. It's just so tiring to have these old farts, you know, keep on being active in the industry um, and being also promoted by the organizers of the Cannes Film Festival and Cannes Film Market and the CNC um, on, you know, uh, uh, basically his keynotes on, on workshops, etc. They, they, they just don't represent the present and the future anymore. So I think there needs to be a change of guard at the Cannes Film Festival and the film market because these, these people are disorganized. They, they did a dreadful job at um, organizing both a uh, uh, on-site uh, uh, basically film market as well as um, uh, online film market and nothing works as I just explained um, it's unbearable to go to the Palais des Festivals because you get searched I don't know how many times you have to do I don't know how many uh, Covid tests and um, and uh, there's no, no one inside and also all the content is supposed to be online but then you can't watch it because you, you, the, you, the, the credentials they gave you don't work so it just is a shambolic, disorganized, the management is dreadful they don't understand, they should have done like Berlin did which is just a, an on-site version for the Berlin Al and VEFM in February which was much more intelligent you know, and which worked very well which I attended and really liked and really enjoyed um, and yeah so Basically, I really recommend the Cat Film Festival to change all its top management because we have fucking old farts, you know, white guys unable to adapt to this day and age. And uh, put some more women at the top, you know, put more younger, intelligent, um, driven women at the top, creative, who are going to, you know, get, get this done. And um, yeah, and so I'm uh, 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 basically. Um, attending today also some other sessions from the CNC um, about exports of French films. I mean, I don't have a high expectations <laughs> about the CNC content because usually they are all but conservative, as, as explained from uh, like this guy from the, the ex president from the uh, Cahier du Cinema who uh, reminisces about and uh, about when films were being watched in theaters. Ah, there's been COVID in the meantime, you twats. I mean, of course, it's not going to be you know, um, the ability to go back to theatres anytime soon. And um, so, yeah, they're uber conservative, but we have a lovely tent in the um, uh, uh, beach of a uh, hotel, Gredalbion, and then you can access the beach, etc. So it's lovely there, and that's what I'm going to do today as well. I mean, also the content can be thorough, you know, but from time to time you've got these uber conservative people who just come about and then well, I just want to cringe. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, France has always been very, you know, full of inertia, uh, conservatism and, um, and inability to move forward, which is why I spent 90% of my time in the UK. Um, so sadly, it's, you know, uh, it's not changing anytime soon. Um, so, yeah. So that is uh, all for me from now and um, talk to you soon. Bye.